The Air OL-29 Delphine is a military jet trainer developed and manufactured by Czechoslovakian aviation manufacturer Aerovodikity. It is the country's first locally designed and constructed jet aircraft, as well as likely being the biggest aircraft industrial program to take place in any of the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance countries except the Soviet Union. In response to a sizable requirement for a common jet-propelled trainer to be adopted across the diverse nations of the Eastern Bloc, Aero decided to embark upon their own design project with a view to suitably satisfying this demand. On April 5, 1959, an initial prototype, designated as the XL-29, performed its maiden flight. The L-29 was selected to become the standard trainer for the Air Forces of Warsaw Pact nations, for which it was delivered from the 1960s onwards. During the early 1970s, the type was succeeded in the principal trainer role by another aero-built aircraft, the L-39 Albatross, heavily contributing to a decline in demand for the earlier L-29 and the end of its production during 1974. During the course of the program, in excess of 3,000 liters minus 29 Delphin trainers were produced. Of these, around 2,000 were reported to have been delivered to the Soviet Union, where it was used as the standard trainer for the Soviet Air Force. Of the others, which included both armed and unarmed models, many aircraft were delivered to the various Comic-Con countries while others were exported to various overseas nations, including Egypt, Syria, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Uganda. Reportedly, the L-29 has been used in active combat during several instances, perhaps the most high-profile being the use of Nigerian aircraft. During the Nigerian Civil War of the late 1960s and of Egyptian L-29s against Israeli tanks during the brief Yom Kippur War of 1973. Aero L-29 at Countess Airport A Private L-29 Delphin at the 2006 Miramar Air Show. In the late 1950s, the Soviet Air Force commenced a search for a suitable jet-powered replacement for its fleet of piston engine trainers. Over time, this requirement was progressively broadened towards the goal of developing a trainer aircraft that could be adopted and in widespread use throughout the national air forces of the Eastern Bloc countries. Around the same time, the nation of Czechoslovakia had also been independently developing its own requirements for a suitable jet successor to its current propeller-powered trainer aircraft. In response to these demands, Aero decided to develop its own aircraft design. The effort was headed by a pair of aerospace engineers, Z. Rublik and K. Tomas. Their work was centered upon the desire to produce a single design that would be suitable both performing basic and advanced levels of the training regime, carrying pilots straight through to being prepared to operate frontline combat aircraft. The basic design concept was to produce a straightforward, easy to build and operate aircraft. Accordingly, both simplicity and ruggedness were stressed in the development process, leading to the adoption of manual flight controls, large flaps, and the incorporation of perforated air brakes positioned on the fuselage sides. Aerodynamically, the L-29 was intentionally designed to possess stable and docile flight characteristics, this decision contributed to an enviable safety record for the type. The sturdy L-29 was able to operate under austere conditions, including performing takeoffs from grass, sand or unprepared fields. On April 5, 1959, the prototype XL-29 conducted its maiden flight, powered by a British Bristol Siddeley Viper turbojet engine. The second prototype, which flew shortly thereafter, was instead powered by the Czech-designed M701 engine. The M701 engine was used in all subsequent aircraft. During 1961, a small pre-production batch of L-29s were evaluated against the Polish PZLTS-11 Iskra and the Russian Yakovlev Yak-30, the main rival submissions for the Warsaw Pact standardized trainer. Shortly after the completion of the fly-offs, it was announced that the L-29 had been selected as the winner, according to aviation author John C. Fredrickson. This outcome had been highly unexpected and surprising to several observers. Regardless of the result, Poland chose to continue to pursue the development and procurement of the TS-11, however, all of the other Warsaw Pact countries decided to adopt the Delphin under the agreements of Comic-Con. During April 1963, full-scale production of the L-29 commenced. 3,600 aircraft were manufactured over a production run of 11 years. During its production life, several derivatives of the L-29 were developed, such as a dedicated, single-seat, aerobatic version, which was designated as the L-29A Acrobat. Another model, an armed reconnaissance version complete with multiple downwards-looking cameras installed in the rear cockpit position, referred to as the L-29R, was also under development. 
However, during 1965, the L-29R project was terminated. Optional armaments could be installed upon some models, consisting of either a detachable gun pod or a pod containing up to four unguided missiles, which could be set upon hardpoints underneath each wing. The Aero L-29 Delphine was a jet-powered trainer aircraft, known for its straightforward and simplistic design and construction. In terms of its basic configuration, it used a mid-wing matched with a T-tail arrangement. The wings were unswept and accommodated air intakes for the engines within the wing roots. The undercarriage was reinforced and capable of withstanding considerable stresses. According to Fredrickson, the L-29 was relatively underpowered, yet exhibited several favorable characteristics in its flight performance, such as its ease of handling. The primary flying controls are manually operated, both the flaps and air brakes were actuated via hydraulic systems. Production aircraft were powered by the Czech-designed Motolet M701 turbojet engine, which was capable of generating up to 1,960 lbf of thrust. Between 1961 and 1968, approximately 9,250 engines were completed. According to reports, no fewer than 5,000 of these engines were manufactured in support of the Delphin program. The student pilot and their instructor were placed in a tandem seating layout underneath separate canopies, the instructor being placed in a slightly elevated position to better oversee the student. Both the student and instructor were provisioned with ejection seats. These were intentionally interlinked to fire in a synchronized manner if either seat was deployed as to eliminate any possibility of a mid-air collision between the two ejector seats. During their late life, many L-29s were resold onto private operators and have seen use in the civil sector. It has become common for various modifications to be carried out to convert the type for such use. These changes would commonly include the removal of military-orientated equipment. The replacement of the metric altimeters with Western counterparts, the addition of alternative radio systems, and new ejection seats. It was also routine for several subsystems, such as the oxygen system, to be disabled rather than removed. L-29 Delphin ZKSSU in excess of 2,000 liters minus 29 Delphins were ultimately supplied to the Soviet Air Force. Like the majority of Soviet-operated aircraft, it acquired its own NATO reporting name, Maya. In the trainer role, the L-29 enabled air forces to adopt an all-through training regime using only jet-powered aircraft, entirely replacing earlier piston engine types. The Delphin served in basic, intermediate and weapons training roles. For this latter mission, they were equipped with hardpoints to carry gun pods, bombs or rockets, according to Fredrickson. The L-29 functioned as a relatively good ground attack aircraft when deployed as such. It saw several uses in this active combat role, such as when a number of Egyptian L-29s were dispatched on attack missions against Israeli ground forces during the Yom Kippur War of 1973. The type was also used in anger during the Nigerian Civil War of the late 1960s. On July 16, 1975, a Czechoslovak Air Force L-29 reportedly shot down a Polish civilian biplane piloted by Diana Zibilanski, who had been attempting to defect to the West. The L-29 was supplanted in the inventory of many of its operators by the Aero L-39 Albatross. The L-29 which was commonly used alongside the newer L-39 for a time. The type was used extensively to conduct ground attack missions in the first Nagorno-Karabakh war by Azeri forces. At least 14 were shot down by Armenian air defenses, out of the total inventory of 18 liters 29s, the Azeri Air Force lost large amounts of its air force due to anti-aircraft fire. On October 2, 2007, an unmodified L-29 was used for the world's first jet flight powered solely by 100% biodiesel fuel. Pilots Carol Sugars and Douglas Rodante flew their Delphine jet from Stead Airport, Reno, Nevada to Leesburg International Airport, Leesburg, Florida in order to promote environmentally friendly fuels in aviation. The L-29, much like its L-39 successor, has found use in air racing, some of which have been re-engined with the British Armstrong Siddeley Viper turbojet engine. From 10 September to September 14, 2008, a pair of L-29s took first and second place at the Reno Air Races. Both L-29s consistently posted laps at or above 500 miles per hour. Former astronaut Kurt Brown took first place in Viper, followed by Red. Bull racer Mike Mangold in Euroburner. Russia has claimed that it destroyed a pair of Georgian L-29s during the 2008 South Ossetia War. On January 18, 2015, separatist forces in the war in Donbass claimed that they possessed an operational L-29. 
Georgian Air Force Aero L-29 Private Aero L-29C Delphin SXLP Reconnaissance Delphine Motorlet M701 Turbojet Engine The Chinese Pulf L-29 Indonesian Air Force L-29 Delphin at Durjantara Mandala Museum and L-29 owned by the University of Iowa College of Engineering, used for research and testing data from Jane's All the World's Aircraft 1971-72. General Characteristics Performance Armament Related Development Aircraft of Comparable Role, Configuration, and Era. Thanks for watching.